So the postman's arrived and he brought some fishing rods. So we've got five fishing rods here, two of them are the same, uh, the other three are different or slightly different. We've got two boat rods, uh, well three boat rods if you count the one that's the same, and two shore or spinning rods. Now when it comes to rods, these particular rods, these are WSB ones, these aren't expensive rods. These ones up here, this is six foot rod, 15 to 30 pound class. Uh, got the standard sort of fittings for your reel, just a screw fitting. And they cost basically about 30 quid these ones. It'll vary obviously depending on where you are. This is quite a stiff action rod. And then you've got one underneath which is the high energy. This is a seven foot rod. It's got a butt, a separated part. In fact, before I say that, you can actually buy this in two pieces if you want. You don't have to have a full length. I prefer to go full length because obviously joints in a rod are our weak points. So, but with this one, you just literally would put the butt on, like so, and you're good to go. Uh, this is, uh, what was this one, 15 to 20 pounds, so it's got slightly softer action, which is fine. And coming down to these rods, these are Orbula. This is a nine foot spinning rod. It's one ounce to three ounce or 28 gram to 85 gram casting. It's a carbon fiber, that one. And that one's the 11 foot version. This is a bass and flatty rod, uh, 28 gram, 113 gram, one to four ounce. And this is 11 and a half feet. Now this one, this is interesting actually because this one, I don't need to put a uh, write up in the comments later and I've used it because I do actually own one of these. I've had one of these for years, this rod, and they are absolutely brilliant. It's got a beautiful action on the end. It's perfect for bass fishing. It's perfect for trailing as well off a boat and for spinning. So it's kind of a bit universal and it can handle big fish. I've taken double figure bass on that and double figure pollock. So it can handle pretty decent sized fish and for the shore, it's ideal. It's not as heavy as a beach caster, obviously, but it works really well. Now, the one I've got at the moment is the 11 foot, but it's actually 9 foot now because one day uh, it got closed in the door and it broke the tip off. So I basically put a new tip eye on it and made it into about a 9 foot rod. Well, this is a 9 foot one. This is a spinning version. It's slightly lighter. It's going to have a slightly softer tip. Again, it's ideal for spinning. These, these two rods here are perfect for doing plugs or shore fishing just like I say for bass if you're going for bass and like I said they're not beach casters but they will put it out put stuff out a fair way but that softness will just give you that bit of casting ability and then like I say these orbital ones here fantastic rods one of the best ones I've ever owned out of all the rods and the best thing about these rods is this rod here I think you're looking at about 30 pounds or under 30 pounds. These ones are under 20 pounds, the energy ones, and these are around about 30 pounds for the bow wave ones. You don't need to spend a lot of money on rods. Um, you know, people go, I've, I've done it, I've gone through all the rods over the years. I've bought sort of hundreds of pound rods, I've bought the cheapest rods you can buy, unless you're buying a rod made of plastic, which will break on you or will fall to bits. If you buy any sort of carbon rods, Pretty much, they should last. The only time they're going to break, really, is if you're using a ridiculously small rod for going shark fishing, or if you shut it in a car door or have an accident standing on it when you're going fishing. So there's no need to buy expensive rods. You only buy, you pay what you want for a rod, really. I mean, you can get some incredibly good rods. It, you know, when you buy reels and things, you might go a bit more expensive than that because obviously you want the quality. But rods, to me, rods have always been rods. I've still got rods I had when I was 11 years old. In fact, I've got rods which my father and my grandfather used to have, right back to bamboo canes, and they still work. Okay, the bamboo canes are a bit twisted now, but all the old fiberglass rods, they're still going. Um, they still work. They've had eye replacements on them, sure. I mean, I don't use them anymore because they're heavy. That's the difference with the carbon rods. They're much lighter. But the old rods, they're still going. So a rod is not something, really, that I would heavily invest in, um, unless you're 
into your casting tournaments, that kind of thing, and you just need that little edge over your competitor. If you're using it for general fishing, no, I don't feel there's any need to spend a fortune on a fishing rod. Like I say, rods are the one thing that tend to just keep on going. You know, your eyes might break, you might have rubbish eyes, um, but you can replace eyes, you know, you can always whip a new eye onto a rod. It's very unusual that I've had rods which are, you know, broken to, without me doing something. I mean, most of the time a rod has snapped. It's probably because it got stood on or got squashed somewhere and it caused a bit of damage and then when you used it, it snapped. Alternatively, like I say, you might be using a child's rod, a little pack rod to try and catch huge fish and it just can't take the strain. Now what sort of rod you use is entirely up to you for the occasion. I always try and stay with sort of a medium action rod. Um, unless you're shark fishing, you don't need a really stiff boat rod. And when it comes to really soft rods, they have their place for certain fish. If you're fishing very small fish or fish that you need to have a lot of give with, that make runs and that, fine. But you don't want to be using, say, a really soft rod on, say, a wrasse. Uh, well, big wrasse, because wrasse will go straight for the rocks. If your rod's too soft, that fish is going in the bottom, same as pollock. Pollock like to dive into the weed. If your rod's too soft, quite often you're going to lose the fish into the weed because your rod's bending too much. They just get the edge on you. So you do use the, the right sort of situations. I always sort of go in the medium range with the rods. And like I say, unless I was going shark fishing or something ridiculous like that, then I'd use a broomstick. The thing is with stiff rods, you're not going to feel the bite detection as much. But you do need that stiffness or that strength as it comes down the rod when you get into big fish or fish you need to pull out the bottom that you don't want getting caught up in the seabed. So there you go, that's like I say a brief look at rods. And like I say, these Orbula ones, Orbula, Orbula? That's what it's called here. Um, yeah, Orbula, carbon rods, they are fantastic rods. I believe the bow wave is a pretty good rod from what I want to understand and the energy is also not a bad rod although I haven't actually tested them. But like I say at the end of the day a rod is a rod I've never really run into any problems with rods whether it's been a 300 pound rod or whether it's been a 20 pound rod they've all been usually pretty much of a much. You just pick what you're comfortable to use and it should all go well and you should catch plenty of fish.